YouTube, it's Brian Phillips. Finally, 4000 3S. This pack fits perfectly in this Airbus A380. Of course, I've modified this a lot. This is a Tian Shang model, and we're gonna fly it today. I have broken this nose gear off, this bogey, thrice. <laughs> so we're gonna do some taxiing. Of course, we have differential thrust on this. We added flaps, spoilers, all sorts of different labels and uh, decals. My wonderful camera crew has a plotter, so she helped us to do that. Plotter. Differential thrust. You can see all sorts of cool features. And I have one two-bladed EDF and then three <laughs> six-bladed EDFs. That's because the uh, fans that I got from Hobby King were the wrong size. That thing looks so good. Flaps. Really sunny. Take off. Our, oh no! We didn't make it very far. And then spoilers. Okay, so we're gonna see what happened. We're gonna do a post mortem. <laughs> we didn't even get off the didn't ground. That yet. Oh no! Oh no! It's a landing gear already. Are you kidding me, guys? Look, I just want to show you this so you can get a get a load of this. Hold on. I'm gonna turn my throttle cut on. There's just not much material to hang on to. And so my repairs did not hold up again. So as you can see here, I've got lots of CA and stuff built up. And so there's just, there just isn't enough material to hang on to there. What are you gonna do? Besides fly it anyway. Am I gonna fly it anyway? but how are you gonna land? And what happens when it falls off when you're flying? And then I have to go find it in a soybean field. What? <sighs> We're gonna try. It's already- Ah, oh, dang it! The camera crew wins. Okay, we'll come back with it fixed. All right, so I took my landing gear and I just had to chip out a few millimeters worth of CA that had built up for my other repairs. And so now I'm going to reopen a hole. I'm just gonna heat this up. It's plenty long, so it's not gonna hurt me. We have the plane upside down. You're gonna be in the way when I, there you go, perfect. I'm just making that nice and toasty. And I just need to open the center hole up just a little bit. so that I can get this thing. So we'll just leave that in there for a second. As you can see, it moves free and everything. I'm just trying to open up the hole to receive. This was the repair and it was just a little bit insufficient. I just melted this metal stud into the center. And so once I have a pocket ready to receive that same depth, then I should be able to press this in here. And so that's what we're gonna do real quick and we'll come back and show you the finishing results. So we fixed the landing gear, as you can see. The CA likes to get stuck a little bit. And so once it's glued, it's usually good. And then there's a little bit of mix in there. So everything is working again. So you probably are seeing this at the end of the video. So don't be surprised. Thanks for watching guys. We try to share these little things with you because we understand. Oh, and then I suppose I should probably show you. Um, we just use like regular Bob Smith Industries, uh, Instacure, medium gap filling, non-foam safe, and then some Insta set, which we link to the stuff. We've been linking to this stuff for years. It works really nice, but I, I, uh, I wouldn't probably use that on the foam of this plane. I just happen to use it on the plastic, okay? So, and that, that repair is way better now. Basically the key is, um, when you've got a piece of plastic that breaks like that, a lot of times you can pin it with a piece of steel like this. And the first time I did it, I heated this up, melted it in, and then you let it cool totally. And then you clip it off. And then basically that gives you your mark point. And you can do that on both sides. It works really nice. And then on the other side, you can, you can lay it down while it's hot and get your first little detent, heat up another end that's past where you cut it off and slide it in and make your pocket. And then when you're ready to go, you just slide it all together as one assembly. It works really sharp and it's super easy. Just use a regular everyday paper clip. And if you bend it like this, you can keep it really, really hot here without burning your fingertips. So it's, 
it doesn't have to be some fancy repair, especially on a plane like this that's been crashed more than it's been flown. But anyway, <laughs> hopefully the flight was good because we haven't seen it yet, but you have. Come back for more. Yes, I have a voltage alarm on my smart pack. You're probably wondering what the heck, Ryan. I've got the DX18. Obviously you could do telemetry with this, except I've got an old plane. And I just wanna show you something because this is the Airbus, the Ting Chang uh, Airbus A380, which is available all over the place. It kind of comes into stock and goes out of stock in the States. Same thing in China and Europe and Asia. Um, but in this case, I got this a few years ago. If this is a plane you're wanting and it's in stock, buy it. They don't stay in stock and they're weird because the box is huge. So if you like it and you want one, just get it. The Smart Pack is gonna work glorious in this. This is a 4003S. The last time we flew this, let's just show the people how well this fits. The only thing kind of tough about it is that these leads on the Smart Packs are so well built that it's hard to make the bend out. Um, I have had to epoxy this little battery tray. And then I also have a strap on the bottom for when I use humongous packs. And then I have an XT60 here. As you guys know, I previous in a previous RC life, I used almost all XT60s. But as you can see, we have an IC3. Hopefully my camera crew is getting a good angle because I can barely see myself. Mm, no, I'm not magic. <clears throat> it's hard to make the angle here, guys. Yeah, I knew I was gonna miss that. But as you can see, it fits great in the socket, but it's just kind of hard to plug in this extension. So really the best thing you could do is just buy an XT60 to IC3 adapter, and which sounds stupid because you really don't need it technically. They do fit, and you see how it's not all the way seated down in there? Mm -hmm. I'm willing to gamble. I feel like gambling today. Do we? Do so, we? oh yeah, well I guess we did have a rodent attack this morning or so something. 5 a.m i wake up on the couch go out to the garage <laughs> and there is something going through our cans in light of the pandemic uh the uh deposit system for returning cans had been stopped and because. so we had how many cans? Like 800 cans or something since, yeah, since December maybe, of 2020. No, so, 20, 2019. Oh no, yeah, that's right. <laughs> December of 2019. Obviously it's not December of 2020. So anyway, guys, uh, we're gonna show you how we lost the nose gear on our uh, taxi and we're gonna fly right now for you in this Ting Shang A380. Okay. okay, throttle cuts off, ailerons, ailerons. Show the people the control surfaces, elevator, elevator. Rudder, rudder, differential thrust, ailerons, ailerons, takeoff flaps, landing flaps, spoilers. So there's a lot that's in here, guys. We did all sorts of cool things. So takeoff flaps, we'll do a little taxi. We have one of the EDFs on the right, has only two fan blades. I had to repair the spinner on the EDF fan. If you guys are new to the hobby, electric ducted fan, that's what an EDF is. This plane, if you buy it, does not look nearly this gorgeous. Stock. That thing is so cool. Okay, here goes nothing. Four thousand. Oh no, my repair didn't work. Now it's a zero bladed fan. Now it's a zero bladed fan, as the uh, camera crew so wisely suggested. Look at this. It, it blew up. I just can't win with this thing. See this? Nope. There it is. Should I see if it flies? No. Watch out camera crew, I wanna try something real quick. <laughs> I don't have enough yaw authority now because the differential thrust is really fighting me. Oh man, it's so frustrating. By the way, my differential thrust is actually a function of the outside two motors and the inside two are just regular. So it's actually a pretty cool, pretty cool system. Just not today. All right, you can pause it. Okay.
All right, my camera crew has advised me against this and I'm gonna do it anyway. I have. I just don't know if I have enough power to make up for the yaw in disparity. See how it wants to go one way? Sounds almost like a real jet engine. All right, camera crew wins. Sorry. Sorry, guys. YouTube, it's Brian Phillips. Tian Shang A380, okay? Also known as an Airbus A380. I have added a few features on this. We're running a Lemon 7, or, uh, Lemon 7 channel with stabilization, not the DSMX or DSMP. This is just the strict lemon one. It's not from motion. Okay, we got all that tested. Take off flaps, landing flaps, spoilers. And as you can see, we've got a little action on the spoilers from both sides. And I had to redo one fan. So we'll see if that works out well. And I have fixed the nose gear numerous, numerous times. Oh, actually, am I feeling wind from the right? Um, I can't really tell. So this is on much. a 4,000 milliamp. Let's talk about that for just a second. 4,000, 3S, smart pack. I've been, IC3 connector goes into my XT60 just fine. It's a little bit harder to get inserted, but I'm always up for a challenge. Okay, so the wind just started coming from our right. So I have to back taxi. Actually, we'll pause and I'll bring it down there. Okay. All right, take off, take off flaps are deployed. Go Man, that speed is so scale. Guys, this Tian Shang product is one of my favorite airliners, despite the other choices, and I have a lot of them. 4,000 milliamp hour 3S, you wouldn't think it would produce a whole lot of thrust. And it seems like it's about the perfect size pack fits in there perfect. So obviously the fan is working. I wouldn't say it's working good. That's full throttle guys, by the way. We got just enough throttle to get up there. Nice turbulent air up there. Okay, we'll come back around here. Nice docile controls. Right over our shoulder here, hun. Very easy to fly this plane. Stabilizer works great. About 50% on my stabilization here. It's just a dial control. There is differential thrust on this plane. There's some takeoff flaps just to slow it down a little bit. We're going into a little bit of a headwind right now. A lot of drag induced by those flaps. I suppose I should probably not like push it on getting air, air speed up against the trees. Must be a lot of turbulent air up over the top of them. Mm -hmm. I do have a voltage alarm plugged in because the telemetry does not exist on this configuration. And if you guys are thinking about getting this plane, don't worry, it comes out of the box ugly as sin. So you're gonna have to do some work to make it look good. That pre-stress in the wing was one of the harder things. And getting the nose to look right was another thing. Do you remember doing all that work? I was just gonna say, and the Rolls Royce decals was a whole nother thing. Okay, I hear my beeping. Full landing flaps, as you can see, it slows down a lot. Okay, I'm gonna have to go around. It's 
stay back off of the runway. That is like the crash spot for this plane. I don't know why I can't get this plane to survive. So we didn't quite fly four minutes on that. I had a four minute timer and I was struggling to put it down. And then I tried to do my go around and what I should have done is just gone out and then doubled back around. But there's just something about this plane that just does not want to live, which is extremely frustrating because how many times have I fixed it, Megan? How many times have you flown it? Well, it's not that many times. It's close. But anyway, yeah, so really the moral of the story is, let's see how bad the battery is. We'll just walk out there. I broke one of the nacelles off. I see some landing gear in the grass. I see something next to it on the left. I have no idea what it is. But there's nothing like a good airliner crash to round out a holiday weekend. We lost a bogey, we lost the nose, nose gear assembly. Looks like we lost another bogey. Here's some mains. I'm serious, like I must have crashed within inches of this exact spot mm -hmm. multiple times. Yep. And it's been because of? Wind? No, lack of thrust. Oh, yeah, power is not the... Well, part of the problem is today I just ran it and I didn't realize I was beeping until I was already on the final. I didn't hear it. What and the wind is even? pushing me so bad. Mm -hmm. But yeah, these landing gear bogies, they would be uh, fixable for sure. They're very light. Yeah. Um, well, let's show the people at home, camera crew, you can hold the wreckage. Yep. This is the type of plane that I want so badly for it to be awesome. And then I fly it and I'm like, really? Come on. Yeah. And it's really not even that bad. See, like I, I could fix that easy enough. This just needs to be re-glued. Everything is working. Obviously the nose gear is not gonna work properly because it's not in there. This looks like oh, it needs please. to be re-glued as well. Let's test the throttle. Yeah, everything is running. I think they're both loose. Looks on like this, side. this one's loose on this side too. So I don't know. I mean, to be honest with you, that's annoying, of course. But really, did we get the nose gear in that wreckage? I have. That's the one we yes, got. Yes. Yes. Oh. I have all of it. So if you look at it this way, guys, you can have an airliner crash and you can make it spectacular, or you can do it like I do with this plane, and it can be just enough so that it's fixable 50 times. <laughs> And that's all I do with this plane is I fly it and crash it because you guys deserve the best. And so the best I can evidently produce is crashes of this plane. <laughs> We're gonna come back with something better, we promise. Thanks for watching guys.